In this video, I'll go over setting up Cloudflare Tunnels and why you may want to consider using it instead of a reverse proxy. If you aren't familiar with Cloudflare Tunnels, it works similarly to a reverse proxy, but without the need to expose ports on your firewall like you would need to with a reverse proxy. I covered setting up a reverse proxy on a Synology NAS in this video listed here on screen, which I'll also link to in the description below. But for some background, I'll briefly go over how a reverse proxy works. To use a Synology NAS as a reverse proxy, you would first need to expose ports 80 and 443 on your router to the internet and set up port forwarding to the corresponding ports on your Synology NAS. Then configure the reverse proxy on your NAS to access internal services like DSM. If you want to set up HTTP to HTTPS redirect, you could use a combination of Apache and WebStation to configure the redirect so clients automatically use HTTPS when connecting to DSM. With Cloudflare Tunnels, port forwarding isn't needed, so no ports need to be exposed to the internet through your router. You would just need to install a daemon application somewhere on your internal network like on your Synology NAS, that establishes a secure connection to Cloudflare. Then you'd need to set up a DNS hostname that is managed through Cloudflare that is linked to an internal service that you would like to access, like DSM, for example. Cloudflare Tunnels also sets up HTTPS connections automatically and allow for an additional layer of authentication and access control if you would like to set that up as well. Let's get started with the setup, and the first thing to do is sign up for an account with Cloudflare. You'll need to bring up the Cloudflare website, click Sign Up, then Sign Up again to bring up this Get Started with Cloudflare page, where you'll need to enter in an email and password, then click Create Account. In my case, I already have an account, so I'll click on the Already Have an Account link and log in. From here, I'll click Add Site, then enter in the domain I'd like to use. From this page, I'll select the Free option, then click Continue. Next, the domain is scanned, and details about the current DNS records are displayed. I'll click Continue, and from this page, I'm given the details about the current name servers and the Cloudflare name servers that I'll need to use with the domain. Note that you do need to use Cloudflare's name servers that are provided to you to make use of Cloudflare tunnels. So make sure the domain that you use is one that you'll be able to change the default name servers for. I'll finish up by clicking Done, Check Name Servers, and run through this quick start guide, taking the default options along the way. Next, I'll work on changing the name servers for the domain that I established to use with Cloudflare, which I registered with Google Domains. Your setup will vary depending on your domain registrar, but if you did use Google Domains, you'll need to click on Manage for the domain you would like to work on. Then from the Domains Overview page, click on DNS. Here, you'll want to click on Custom Name Servers. Enter in the name servers that were provided by Cloudflare, which I've already done, and click Save. Then click on Switch to these settings to finalize the setup. Now I'll switch back to Cloudflare and click on Check Name Servers to have Cloudflare check if the name server change that I just made took effect. The message states to wait a few hours for an update, but in my case, the name server is updated in just a few minutes, and I confirm that by clicking on the Cloudflare logo in the upper left corner of the website where the domain I added had an active status. Now I can start setting up a tunnel by selecting the domain. Expand the traffic menu, then click Cloudflare Tunnel. From the page that loads, I'll click on the Launch Zero Trust dashboard link. Then from the dashboard, I'll select Access, then Tunnels. Here I'll click on Create a Tunnel. Then I'll give the tunnel a name and click Save Tunnel. For the connector, I'll select Docker and copy the docker run command that is provided, which includes the token that is needed to access the tunnel. 
Next, I'll bring up DSM on the Synology NAS I plan to use as the Cloudflare tunnel connector and make sure the Docker package is installed, which it is, and that SSH is enabled, which it is as well. Then I'll SSH into my Synology NAS and paste in the Docker run command that I copied from Cloudflare earlier. There are a few changes that need to be made before running the command, so I'll do that now. I'll add sudo to the beginning of the command. Add the dash d option to run the container in detached mode. Add in the restart unless stopped option to make sure the Docker container starts up on a reboot of the Synology NAS. And give the container the name Cloudflare D like the image it was created from. Now I'll run the command and after it completes, the connection to the Cloudflare tunnel should be established. Now I'll switch back to Cloudflare and we can see that the connector has established a connection both from the screen where we left off at and from the tunnel page as well where we see a status of healthy. At this point we can start setting up subdomains that we can use to point to services within our internal network and the first I'd like to set up is a connection to this virtual DSM VM that I'm running. If I look at the URL, it uses HTTP on port 5000, which is the information needed to complete the setup. Now back on the Zero Trust dashboard, I'll select the tunnel that was created earlier, then click on Configure. I'll then select Public Hostname, then click on the Add a Public Hostname link. Here I'll enter in a subdomain I'd like to use to access the virtual DSM host and select the domain that was just added. Under server, I'll select HTTP for type and enter in the internal IP address and port number for URL. Then click Save Hostname. Now, if I click on the public hostname that was just created, then the public hostname again from the side pop-up window that appears, the virtual DSM host loads up successfully using the Cloudflare Tunnel subdomain that was just set up. Next, I'd like to set up a connection to my DS220 Plus Synology NAS that is set up to use HTTPS on port 5001. I'll do that by clicking on the Add a Public Hostname link once again, then enter in the subdomain I'd like to use and select the domain that was configured for this setup. Under Type, I'll select HTTPS, then for URL, I'll enter in the internal IP address and port number for my DS220+. Next, I'll expand the additional application settings. Then under TLS, I'll enable the No TLS Verify option, which will allow any certificate from the origin to be accepted. Then click Save Hostname. Now I'll click on the newly created public hostname and again from the side pop-up window, which loads the DSM login for the DS220 Plus using the newly created Cloudflare subdomain. Next, I'd like to add in a one-time pin login page before exposing the DSM login windows for both systems that were just set up. To do this, I'll first confirm that the one-time pin login method has been added as an authentication option from settings, then authentication. In my setup, one-time pin was enabled automatically, but if you need to enable this option, select the Add New Link where you can add the one-time pin or any of the other identity providers you would like to use. Next, I'll expand the Access menu and select Applications. Then I'll click on the Add an Application link. From this window, I'll select the Self-Hosted option. Then from this Application Configuration window, I'll fill in the application name the session duration as is. Enter in an asterisk or star symbol to match any subdomain. Select the domain I've been using from the domain menu, then click Next. From this window, I'll enter in a policy name. Then under Selector, I'll select Emails and enter in an email address I want to allow access to the public host names that were set up under Value. I'll then click Next then Add Application. Now, if I bring up both tabs that were opened earlier and refresh the page, 
we can see the one-time pin login appears. I can then enter in the email address that was set up with access to the configured application and click on the send me a code link to receive an email with the pin, which I received successfully. Now I'll enter in the pin and click sign in, which brings me to the DSM login window. At this point, Cloudflare Tunnels is set up and working properly and looks to be a nice alternative to a reverse proxy. But if you would like to learn more about reverse proxies, you'll want to check out this video listed here on screen. Lastly, if you'd like to support my work, check out the support this channel section in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.